Hi everyone, I'm Olivia and today I'm going to read a story with someone and she's sitting next to me. So let's meet. Hi, what's your name? My name is Joanna. Can you introduce yourself to all the viewers today? Hi everybody, my name is Joanna. And how old are you? I'm nine. Nine. So, uh, so Joanna is a student of my school and now she's in? Primary three. Primary three. Okay, Joanna. Now we are going to read a story, and you are the one that choose this story, right? What is the title of this story? Heidi. Heidi. So we are going to read chapter one. So you and me, we will take turn every paragraph. Okay. Okay. Can you read louder? I guess. Okay. Okay. So who will read first? You or me? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Again. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. So, you. I'll be the one. Yes. Okay, I'll be the first one, okay? So, um, listen carefully. This is a very good story and we'll discuss further about this story after we finish. Actually, we, are, we won't finish like the whole chapter today. Just some paragraph, okay? Yes. Okay. So, this is about a girl named Heidi and chapter 1, Going Up to the Arm Uncle. The little old town of Mainfeld is charmingly situated. From it, a footpath is through green, well-wooded stretches to the foot of the heights which look down imposingly upon the valley. Where the footpath begins to go steeply and abruptly up the Alps, the heat with its short grass and pungent herbage, at one sends out its soft perfume to meet the way fairer. Now, Joanna. One bright sunny morning in June, a tall vigorous maiden of the mountain region climbed up the narrow path. Leading a little girl by the hand, the youngster's cheeks were in such a glow that it showed even through her sun-browned skin. Small wonder though, for in spite of the heat, the little one, who was scarcely five years old, was bundled up as if she had to brave a, brit a bitter frost. Her shape was difficult to distinguish, for she wore two dresses, if not three, and around her shoulders, a large red cotton shawl, with her feet encased in heavy hobnailed boots. This hot and shapeless little person toiled up the mountain. Wow, there is something interesting here. So this girl is wearing like two dresses, if not three. Can you imagine if we wear like three dresses in Palembang? It must be very hot, I guess. Okay, I'll continue the next paragraph. The pair had been climbing for about an hour when they reached a hamlet halfway up the great mountain named the Alm. This hamlet was called I'm Dorfli. If you want to know, Dorfli is a kind of... Hmm, is it a German name? Something like that. Because I think this setting is in, a, in German, right? In Germany. Yes. Okay, I'll continue. The meaning of Im Dorfli or the little village. It was the elder girl's hometown and therefore she was greeted from nearly every house. People called her from windows and doors and air very often from the road. But answering questions and calls as she went by, the girl did not loiter on her way and only stood still when she reached the end of the hamlet. Their few cottages lay scattered about, from the farthest of which a voice called out to her through an open door. Data, please wait one moment. I'm coming with you if you are going farther up. Come on, Jenna, it's your turn. When the girl stood still to wait, the child instantly let go her hand and promptly sat down on the ground. Are you tired, Heidi? Data asked the child. No, but hot, she replied. 
We shall be up in an hour if you take big steps and climb with all your little might. Does the elder girl try to encourage her small companion? A stout, pleasant-looking woman stepped out of the house and joined the two. The child had risen and wandered behind the old acquaintances, who immediately started gossiping about their friends in the neighborhood and the people of the hamlet generally. Where are you taking the child, Deta? asked the newcomer. Is she the child your sister left? Yes, Deta assured her. I'm taking her up to the Alm Uncle, and there I want her to remain. Wow, now we are going to the next paragraph. It's going to be interesting. You can't really mean to take her there, Deta. You must have lost your senses to go to him. I'm sure the old man will show you the door and won't even listen to what you say. Why not? As he's her grandfather, it is high time he should do something for the child. I've taken care of her until the summer, and now a good place has been offered to me. The child shall not hinder me from accepting it. I tell you that. It would not be so hard if he were like other mortals, but you know him yourself. How could she look after a child, especially such a little one? She'll never get along with him, I'm sure of that. But tell me of your prospect. I'm going to a splendid house in Frankfurt. Last summer, some people went off to the baths and I took care of their wounds. As they got to like me, they wanted to take me along but I could not leave. They have come back now and persuaded me to go with them. I'm glad I'm not a child, exclaimed Barbara with a shudder. Nobody knows anything about the old man's life up there. He doesn't speak to a living soul. And from one year's end to the other, he keeps away from church. People get out of his way when he appears once in a 12 month down here among us. We all fear him, and he's really just like a hidden or an old Indian, with those thick gray eyebrows and that huge uncanny beard. When he wanders along the road with his twisted stick, we are all afraid to meet him alone. That is not my fault, said Deta stubbornly. He won't do her any harm, and if he should, he's responsible, not I. I wish I knew what weighs on the old man's consciences. Why are his eyes so fierce and why does he live up there all alone? Nobody ever sees him, and we hear many strange things about him. Didn't your sister tell you anything, Deta? Of course she did, but, but I shall hold my tongue. He wouldn't make me pay for it if I didn't. Barbara had long been anxious to know something about the old uncle and why he lived apart from everybody. Nobody had a good word for him, and when people talked about him, they did not speak openly, but as if they were afraid. She could not even explain to herself why he was called the Alm Uncle. He could not possibly be the uncle of all the people in the village. But since everybody spoke, spoke of him, she did the same. Barbara, who had only lived in the village since her marriage, was glad to get some information from her friend. Deta had been bred there, but since her mother's death, had gone away to earn her livelihood. Okay, so we will finish in this paragraph. So actually, in this story, they are talking about an old man. And they even give a name of this old man, right? What's the name of this old man? The Alm Uncle. The Alm Uncle, yeah. So I think this is a very common thing that happen. 
that sometimes when we don't like someone, we tend to talk about her or him while they don't know what we're talking about or like we do gossiping, something like that. So, I want to ask Joanna, what is the moral value of this story today? The moral is do not talk bad about somebody before you get to know them. Okay, so everybody, maybe we can learn something and I'm pretty sure we can learn something from this story as what Joanna said before that we cannot judge someone without knowing them actually or especially if you only hear something here, something there about the person but we actually have to know them in person so we know are they really good or not so stop gossiping do you agree with me yes yes okay so we'll see you in the next story bye bye No, this is wrong. Okay, okay, again, okay, again. Okay. This is very Indonesian style. Okay, one more time. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Again. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot.